TaxHawk offers free federal filing for all users and you pay just a small amount for the state tax return. If you are interested in using TaxHawk this year to file your taxes online, stick around. I have a complete walkthrough and review in this video. Hey guys, it's Justine with College Investor, investing in personal finance for millennials, and today we're taking a look at TaxHawk. Most people don't know this, but TaxHawk and FreeTax USA are sister companies. So if you're doing a side-by-side -side comparison, they're pretty much identical. <laughs> they look identical on the inside. You're going to be paying identical prices, so just be aware of that. If you're looking for a bargain tax software and you don't wanna pay premium prices like you would with an H&R Block or a TurboTax, then TaxHawk could very well be your solution. Now, one big drawback that you'll want to know off the bat is that they don't have any 1099 imports. You can't import those tax PDFs. And so if you're looking for a tax software that's going to save you time, TaxHawk may not be that solution for you. We're really looking at price and the ease of use inside of the dashboard is actually really nice. We're gonna go through that in the walkthrough. But if you're looking for ways to streamline those processes of uploading those PDFs, you're not gonna really find that here with TaxHawk. So as I mentioned, you're not going to pay anything for your federal return. You will pay an additional $14.99 per state filing. Also, if you're wanting to upgrade to get the pro support, you're going to be paying $44.99 as part of that plan. So let's take a look here at what you're going to be paying. The additional add-ons, there's the state return, and then the deluxe support gets you access to priority support and live chat and unlimited amendment returns. Plus, if you're looking for pro support, I think this is really where most people are going to fall within. Like skip the deluxe, go for the pro support because you're going to get live screen share. Who doesn't appreciate a good screen share, especially when you're filing taxes and you have questions? You're going to get that personal tax advice advice from a professional and phone support. If you are walking through a tax filing situation or you added on new things as part of your tax filing situation, maybe you bought a house or you have a dependent or you started a new business and you have questions on that and you want some answers, then pro support would be a function that you could add on to your pricing of TaxHawk. What's new in 2024 for TaxHawk? Well, they did update their tax software to apply to the latest tax code and law changes for 2024. You're going to see that across the board for things that have happened either pre-pandemic have now reverted back to kind of the standard changes such as the child care tax credit or you're going to also see things like the latest tax income brackets change over the standard deduction has increased so you're going to see those implemented within tax hawk also, you do have the ability to upload the W-2. You just can't upload any of those 1099 forms that I was mentioning. Now, TaxHawk consistently lands on our list of best tax software, mainly because the user experience is really easy to get through and the price point is great for those who are looking for a deal. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dashboard and I'll show you what it looks like. Inside of the TaxHawk dashboard, you're going to see sections of your federal tax return broken up into those main categories, income, deductions and credits, miscellaneous, your summary, and then your state return. The only thing about this software and similar to Free Tax USA is that you can't click through to the other sections until you complete the one that you're in. So income is always going to be first. And what I like about this is it's very visual. It's going to give you a menu of options that you can choose from, and then it's going to show you which ones you've completed by giving you a green check mark, or it's going to show you items that you haven't filled out with a hollow check mark. I find that visual, I'm a very visual person when it comes to filing my taxes, this is such a great way to just show you exactly which step you're on. Also, if you were using TaxHawk in the past, it's going to show you what that looked like from the previous year, and then what you need to key in for 2023. So I've already input a W-2 form in this scenario, so you can see that's already been filled in, and then it's going to change to a blue edit button, if you have a form that you have not started, 
but it shows that you've completed it from the year prior. It says needs info right here. And then you can click start and add that form. Now it's also going to tell you, we've saved your information from last year, so it's easier to enter this year. So they do try to help you out if you are a repeat customer by saving that information, even though they can't import those 1099s, they're actually at least going to copy over the text that you keyed in from the previous year. So in this case, I did a TD Ameritrade, and let's say my interest income was $722, and we'll save and continue, and then it's going to show right here in that little column. Also, you're going to see the federal amount due or the federal amount of refunds, potential refund uh, update here up at the top, which is really nice to see, and that, that is sticky up here so that you can consistently see that as you're working through your tax return. So far, I've done the income section. I've also filled out just the personal section, which is usually just your address, your social security, your filing status, any dependents. I've already gone through that section. So I can give you a quick peek at what that looks like. Pretty straightforward. I'm just putting in fake information for the sake of this tutorial, but it's a menu of options. I found it really easy to use. What's your filing status? It's got some hyperlinks here to kind of show you what are the differences. If you've never done your taxes before, then you're going to kind of see a walkthrough of some of these common questions or questions that maybe you have and it's going to help answer those with these little helpful pop-up boxes. So that's what this looks like on the personal information side of things. I can also go back through and continue in my income section. I'm gonna go back out. And then it's going to show you a list of common income items. If you have any of these, then you can go ahead and click start to add that form. If you don't, you just simply skip it and move on to the next thing. Business and rental income, if you uh, are a 1099K income, this is actually going to reach a wider range of business owners. So if this is you, this is where you live. <laughs> if you drove for a ride sharing service such as Uber or Lyft, sold items online, there's a good chance you'll get a 1099K. Good information for those who are doing side gigs or have done side hustles in this past year and wanna get that uploaded, you can do so inside of tax hawk. So let's continue to move forward. And then you're going to get a nice summary after each of these main sections to show you exactly what you've keyed in so far. If you missed anything, all of these different types of income forms are hyperlinked. So you can go back to that particular section and input the information. Now we're going to move on to deductions and credits. And what I like about TaxHawk, they're kind of copying from the big players like TurboTax and H&R Block, who really rely on icons and little uh, square graphics to help keep it visually simple for you. So if you have any of these deductions, they're gonna help you find tax breaks for it. If you're a homeowner, out-of-pocket medical expenses, investment interest paid, if you had any of these, then you can just simply check market and then it's going to take you to the appropriate form to input that information. And then similar to the big players, which I really like, TaxTalk is really trying to elevate the user experience on the inside, is it's going to walk you through this helpful guided question and answer uh, style of doing your taxes. So it's just going to ask you these very simple questions. Did you contribute to an IRA? If you're like, what's this? You can pop open the question mark pop up and it's going to tell you exactly why they're asking that. Some of their pop up boxes are a little wordy such as this one for the IRA contributions. I feel like they could spend some time for the next iteration to really clean up and simplify this language so it's not so long-winded, but it is there for your information. And then you can go through the yes or no questions, save and continue, and continue moving forward with your federal return. All right, so I said that I had a child care provider and it looks like I need to start and add that in. Amount that we paid to the care provider, let's say it was 15,000. Okay, so now it's already caught an error for me, which is really nice as you're going through. It doesn't save those errors until the end. It just double checks it after you've input the information. So let's take a look. The total amount you paid to care provider doesn't match the total amount of qualifying expenses you paid. Let's go back to child care expenses. There we go. Okay, 
<laughs> so I had to change some things because my dependent was too old for the child tax credit in this scenario. But now you can see it's a $2,000 credit. So $600 for the child care credit in this scenario as I'm keen in information. You're gonna see again the menu of options for common deductions and credits. And if you needed to go into a particular section, then you can go ahead and click start. They have HSA contributions right here that you can start. Uh, anything that's related to home or uh, vehicle and fuel, employment, other. If you don't have any of these things, you can just simply move forward and then it's going to give you again that summary section at the end. And then we're going to continue to miscellaneous. And what I like about Tax Hawk is if you don't have any of these situations, it's not gonna force you through that yes or no question and answer guidance. You can just simply take a look at what they're asking. And then if you don't have any of these forms, what I love is they have the form names and the form number associated with each of them. If you don't have any of these things, then you can click continue and go through. And then we get to your federal tax summary. Tax Hawk, I feel like is a really straightforward user experience on the inside. It's a no frills and thrills type experience, but it's going to help you file your taxes very easily online. So is Tax Hawk worth it to file your taxes? If you're looking for something that is going to give you a bargain rate, even if you add in the pro support of around $45 plus the 15, so all in, 15 for the state tax return, all in you're looking at 60 bucks to file just a normal federal and state return plus some pro support to help you just make sure everything looks good on the inside, then yeah, I'd say it's worth it. The one caveat to this is that you're not going to have those 1099 imports and be able to connect to outside investing accounts like you could with a TurboTax. And so that if that's really important to you to save time, then you might want to think about doing an H&R Block or a TurboTax. If you are good, you have a pretty simple tax filing situation and you know kind of what you're doing, then Tax Hawk very well could be the solution for you. Don't forget we have complete tax software reviews and walkthroughs available to you at thecollegeinvestor.com. If you like this one, give it a big thumbs up and we'll catch you in the next one.